All right, this is a take two. I went through the whole take. Turns out it wasn't recording, so I was just kind of rambling to myself here. So welcome to my first video on this channel. What I'm gonna be doing is documenting my journey through getting my real estate license and everything that entails in that. Now this part I'm doing here is how long does it take to pass your real estate course? I am in Texas, so I will be getting my license through the TREC. Uh, Texas Real Estate Commission and one of the requirements is that you pass uh, a 180 hour course now Texas has one of the highest hourly requirements the only other one that I know I would compare it to is California which I believe is 140 uh, I believe like Pennsylvania Pennsylvania other states um, are like 40 hours 60 hours it just depends but Texas is gonna be one of the highest now the way it breaks down is <clears throat> the full course is six parts. Uh, in those six parts, you're going to have Texas Principles of Real Estate Part 1, Texas Principles of Real Estate Part 2, Texas Law of Contracts, Texas Pr Promulgated, Texas Promulgated Contract Forms, Texas Law of Agency, and Texas Real Estate Finance. Those are the six parts, and each part is a 30-hour course. At the end of each course, you're going to have a test that you have to pass in order to jump to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, right? So you have to pass each one. Now, the TREC is not the one issuing this course. If you go onto their website, trec.gov, you're going to see different uh, schools and courses um, that that are authorized uh, by the TREC to be teaching these courses. Um, you can go to school for that, it, but if you do it like in an actual school itself, it's gonna take much longer than it's gonna take you to do it online. I know some people rather go to school because you have an uh, instructor there to answer your questions. Uh, you have a lot more hands-on approach, but if you're doing it online, uh, depending where you take it, um, you're gonna kind of go at your own speed. There's some things you're gonna know, you're gonna wanna fast forward through, some things you're gonna wanna uh, you know, repeat, rewind, and listen to again. Um, <clears throat> the course that I took is called Real Estate U, and you can find that, you can find them on uh, online at realestateu.official.academy. Um, this course here ran me $160. Uh, so there are going to be courses that are more expensive. There's going to be courses that this is one of the cheapest ones I found uh, that I found. Um, I believe there was another one that was like a hundred bucks, but it was all uh, text. Uh, what I mean by that is you kind of just have to go in like a textbook and read everything yourself. This one here uh, I like because it uh, it had kind of like a audio uh, somebody reading. Uh, the text and kind of letting you know kind of like an instructor uh, audio instructor uh, basically what it is now I will say this there are uh, let me go into this real quick each course there's six courses total each course has 10 to 12 chapters and in those 10 to 12 chapters you're gonna have pages each page you open up is gonna be timed so let's say, for example, one page is just a uh, contract download for you to review the contract. It's not gonna let you. It's not gonna let you fast forward through that page for maybe six minutes. Um, there's gonna be another page uh, that you open up. It's not gonna let you go to the next page uh, for maybe 30 minutes. It just depends what the instructor is teaching, but it's not gonna let you go forward. Now that's just this real estate U course. I don't know the way um, these other courses do it, but that's real estate U, and I think that's probably the way um, every other course is gonna do the same thing. Just because um, they want to make sure you get your full 30 hours per course and your full 180 hour course total. Um, again, I started this course February the third, and I finished it on February the 17th. So it took me two weeks, uh, just about two weeks to burn through this course. I was on this course every single day. Um, I mean, I was going hard trying to get this course out the way. Now, you might be saying, okay, so I took the course, now what? Now do I get my real estate license? No, there's a lot more things to it. Um, you have to actually register through uh, TREC 
and uh, submit a formal application. Uh, the application cost, I believe right now it's $205, $205 to do that. And then you have to wait. You have to submit all your course certificates through the TREC to let them know that you did complete the 180 hour course. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention is after, when you're done with your first course and you're gonna take that final exam, there's six final exams, right? Each course, six courses. So that final exam, you're gonna pay $15. And again, I'm not sure the way other courses do it, but you're gonna have to uh, use a proctor. Um, they go through, uh, I believe it's called Proctor U. And what that is, is when you, you're gonna take your test online, there's gonna be somebody watching you take your test, making sure that you're not on your phone getting the answers. Um, making sure that you don't have a cheat sheet or something like that, right? So there's gonna be somebody actually there walking you through the steps and uh, watching you through you know, your webcam or what have you. And um, just to make sure that you are taking the test correctly and that somebody's not taking the test for you, you're gonna to need to have your ID, uh, show them your ID, show them that it's you, the whole thing. Um, you're gonna do that six times and for each course that you take, it's $15, right? So that's what's that, uh, 30, 60, 90, so that's an extra $90. So that's 160 plus 90, so that's 250, just in the course itself. Um, so then from there, let's say you submit all this uh, information to TREC, T-R-E-C, uh, Texas Real Estate Commission. From there, what you're gonna do is, once they approve you, um, what's gonna happen is they're gonna send you um, a packet or maybe not even a packet. They're gonna send you the information to go get your, your fingerprints taken for a background check. Then from there, what happens is you have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, once your, back, your background check clears, a lot of people don't know this. What they're gonna do is make sure that you don't have any outstanding student loan debt. Now, you might have student loan debt that isn't um, in default. If it's not in default, you're good. But if you have student loan debt that is in default, that might be an issue. So just be aware of that. So you might be thinking, man, you know what? I'm not sure about my background for whatever reason, right? I'm not sure, you know, I have, I've had a, a misdemeanor back in the day. Maybe you even had a felony or you're not sure about your, uh, your default situation as far as your student loans, right? What you can do before you apply to um, get your real estate license through Trek, which is $205, is you can submit a background form. Now the background form is $50. So 50 um, instead of your 205, and then they can still deny you because you're not sure. Um, you know, I'd pay the 50 before um, I do that full 205. So the background check, what that's gonna do is you send it to them with your $50, um, you know, you tell them your situation, everything, you know, your background, all that, and then they'll get back to you, let you know, like, no, you, you can still apply or you need to clear this up before we can go forward with you. Um, so that's just another thing to think about. Um, like I said, I will be documenting uh, all my steps right now um, to get my real estate license. Uh, so if you're interested in getting yours, you know exactly how much it's going to cost, what you need, how long it takes, all the way through. Uh, interviewing with brokers, all that stuff. I'm gonna be documenting everything. So right now what I'm doing, like I said, I just passed my six part 180 hour course, which took me two weeks, is I'm gonna, I'm wait, actually waiting for Trek to get back to me. So what I did, um, which a lot of people don't do, um, what I did is I actually applied through Trek first, just because they're backlogged. It's gonna take them about a month to get back to you, right? So I applied through Trek first before I started my course because I knew the course was going to take, um, I thought I actually thought my course was going to take like two months because everybody was telling me the course is going to take at least two months. But I just kind of shut out all the noise and I sat here on my laptop and knocked it out. Um, of course, it's going to take longer if you know, you're doing other stuff, but I just really wanted to get this out the way. So I actually um, applied on Trek so that took off two weeks from the time I had to wait because if I did my 180 hour course and then applied through Trek, I have another two weeks that I'd actually have to wait. Uh, so right now I'm just waiting for Trek to get back to me. I submitted um, all my, um, my certificate, my course certificates. 
Uh, so I'm waiting for them to get back to me to give me the information to go get my fingerprints taken, pass my background check, and then we'll go from there. Um, if you haven't already, be sure and like and subscribe so you can uh, follow along and see uh, the progress and see how long it takes from start to finish to get everything to get everything done. And uh, I appreciate you watching and check you on the next one. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of J King where I document my real estate journey. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I got my real estate license in one month. So maybe this can work for you and help you out and save some time. All right, quick disclaimer. Today is March the 20th. Um, when I started this whole process, uh, I started on February the 3rd. So it is uh, about a few more weeks, more than one month. But the only reason that is, is because I got held up uh, with the fingerprints to get that background check. That kind of took a long time. But from start to finish, everything, it was one month. Now, I passed the, the real estate course. That's the first thing you have to do. I passed that in two weeks. Um, I have another video of how I passed the, the real estate course in two weeks. Uh, I'm in Texas, so this does go through the TREC, which is TREC. And uh, from there, once you pass uh, your, your real estate course, you, um, you submit it to TREC and they're gonna send you the approval to take your test. Now, what a lot of people don't do is, or rather what they do uh, end up doing is they start with their test and then once they do their test, they'll go on TREC and um, submit their application. That's not what you want to do. If you want to fast track this, what the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to, before you do anything else, go on TREC or wherever you are in the country, whatever state you're in, go to their, uh, their real estate commission website and uh, submit an application. Make an online account, submit an application. Um, here in Texas, it's $200, submit your application. Now, what I didn't do, uh, which cost me an extra two weeks, is when I submit my application, uh, what I, I come to find out later, at the same time, you can um, also submit the application to take your, your, uh, your background, uh, to take your fingerprints, to get your background check, and that, that'll fast track everything. Um, so from there, you do that, you take your, uh, your real estate course, um, here in Texas, it's 180 hours. Uh, I did that in two weeks. Again, I have another video that shows you how I passed all that in two weeks. Uh, so from there, what you do, once you pass that, you get your, your, your course certificate, you send that to TREC. It takes about a week for them to send you the approval to take your uh, state and uh, national um, real estate exam. So right there, you're in your three weeks. So, <clears throat> Depending on the time frame um, and what they have available, you can wait from anywhere from a week to a month to take your uh, your real estate exam. Now, I was lucky; I was able to find something uh, within a few days of me um, um, submitting the application to take my my real estate exam. So. I was kind of freaked out on the national part because uh, you needed to pass, uh, you needed to answer about 60 something, some odd questions correct. And the state, you only needed to answer 21 correct. So I was kind of thinking I was going to burn the state no problem and I was going to have problems with the, the national part. But what ended up happening was I passed, I passed the national part and I failed the state. I was devastated because up to this point, I had passed everything. As far as my, my course, you have six tests. I passed them all on the first try. So here I was thinking, all right, I'm gonna take my real estate exam. I'm gonna pass everything. A week from now, I'm gonna get my real estate license. I'm gonna just start, hit the ground running, right? Didn't happen. So I failed uh, the state portion and um, I had to retake it. So I wanted to take it as quick as possible. And the only thing they had available was a month. Uh, so I didn't want to do that. Uh, I did find uh, they had something available within the next few days in Austin, which is about 70 miles from where I'm at. So I went ahead and did that. Um, went to Austin, took the real estate uh, exam, the state portion again, and ends up I failed a second time. And this time I only failed by two, two questions, right? I got 19 right, you needed 21 
to pass the exam. I mean, I was freaked out because at this point, I only had one more chance to pass it. If you didn't pass it within your first three tries, you got to take another, I believe it's a 60 hour course. And of course you're paying again, right? So I didn't want to do that. Side note, every time you take the exam, it's, uh, I believe it costs 60, 68, something like that, $68. So if I would have passed it the first time, um, state and national, it's $68. Failed the, the state, second time, I had to pay another 68. Now, third time rolls along, the only, again, the only thing they had available was in Austin. So there I go back to Austin the third time. Now these questions in the state exam, they're, not, they're really not anything that you're gonna have in your, uh, your real estate course. I mean, they're, they're questions that are really not there. They're kind of designed to kind of stump you and trick you a little bit. Um, I do have another video of how to pass the Texas uh, portion of your, of your real estate exam um, because these questions here, again, they're for the most part, they're not gonna be on your real estate course. So the first two times when I failed it, I was kind of, I didn't even know, I had no idea uh, for the most part what these questions were, a lot of them. So um, I remembered some of the questions, so I kind of did a deep dive online, figured it out, and um, took it the third time, third time's a charm, I ended up passing it. So now we're in it uh, four weeks. Uh, I ended up passing it. Um, I was pretty pretty excited about that. Um, they automatically are submitted through Pearson View, which is um, the the person that conducts a real estate exam, and um, you don't have to do anything. Uh, they automatically submit it within a few days. It was updated on my um, on my profile in my uh, Trek account, and the way it works in your Trek account is you have these little uh, boxes that are unchecked. And it shows you like the first one, for example, is going to be um, a letter sent out. Second one is uh, education uh, satisfied, something to that effect. Third one is background check. Fourth one is exam passed, um, something to that effect. Right. And nothing's checked. So as you complete each task, it gets checked, checked, checked. So everything was checked. The only thing that was unchecked was my background check. Right. And I was kind of freaking out about that because um, I did have a charge a while back. This was back in maybe like 20 years ago. I was still a kid, right? So I was kind of freaking out. Like, man, I came this far, and they're gonna they're gonna kind of uh, you know not approve my background. Well, my you know my background check is not gonna go through. And uh, so that was. Um, that was four weeks in and every day I was checking it. And you know, once when you're checking something every day and it's still the same, I mean, it, it just seems like it's never ending. Right. And, uh, that was, let's see here. The third, all the way to the 20th. So one, two, so it took me two, one, two, three. So it took, after I passed everything, which took me one month to pass, I was kind of just waiting on my background check, right? Which took an extra two weeks, um, which took uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, eight, which took 18 more days. Now, if I would have submitted my background check at the same time that I submitted my application, uh, maybe within a few days of me um, getting my passing my exam I would have been I would have got my inactive license so again today's the 20th and I'm pretty freaked out uh, I'm pretty excited that I did receive my inactive license today um, again I didn't think my background was gonna clear but it did clear and I'm I'm relieved um, so I already scheduled a, a broker meeting a sponsoring broker meeting for Monday today's Friday so I will make a video on that and see how that goes and I will post it. But again, uh, just to recap, when 
when you start, before you do anything else, submit your application, um, submit your, your request for fingerprints, go take your fingerprints. At the same time that you start your, your real estate course, get your course started, that you want the ball, you want everything rolling, right? You want the ball rolling. You don't want to be waiting on anything. So when you start taking your course, I mean, just focus, focus on your course, kill the noise and just, just do it. Just take it. Um, if you want this bad enough, I mean, you, you no excuses. Just take it. Like I said, I passed it in two weeks, 180 hour course, uh, six part course, uh, six tests, one test to each part. Um, and just make it happen. I, I, I did this. Um, I actually thought this was going to take me eight months. I really did because when I went online, I saw everybody saying it, it takes six to eight months to get your real estate license, which I was like, man, I don't know if I want to wait that long. You know, I, I got bills coming in. I got, you know, I, I got, I have my job here, but I mean, I really wanted to start a new career. Uh, so I was like, I don't know if I want to wait that long. So once this course came in, I said, oh man, this course, I'm going to burn through quick because I already knew more or less a lot of this stuff. Um, don't ask me how I knew. I just said, oh, okay, oh yeah, yeah, okay, this is this, this is that, okay. So that's how I was able to pass each um, each test, each uh, of a six-part test uh, pretty quick um, on the first try. So again, all in, it took me about a month and a half to get my real estate license. Again, today I just got my inactive license and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm gonna be detailing everything all the way through um, getting my, my active license, which is when you hang your license with a broker. Uh, I'm gonna be meeting with a few brokers and see uh, what's the right fit and um, check you on the next one. All right, so I'm about to meet with my second broker. Um, see what they got to offer. It's gonna be here through uh, through Skype, and um, let's see how it goes. He wants to do this over the video uh, with you and I. Okay. And then uh, he wants to do it with a phone call real quick. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Hey, hold on one second. Yeah, Rick said to go ahead and start, and then he would come in and join us in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, and he'll, he'll go through all the details of uh, what the company is and how it works and everything. Great. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about is the training program. I don't know if I'm sitting too close to okay. the camera. But, uh, so what we do is we have a three-prong approach to it, uh, in my section of it. We, we do a Tuesday night training, which is on social media. Okay. We talk about how to take advantage of social media, what to post, when to post, how all that works. Yeah. Uh, and then we work on open house. You can't really do open houses right now. Yeah. But, you know, it's a really good way to meet new clients and people that are already in the industry or looking to get into the, uh, into the housing market. Mm -hmm. So we spend 12 weeks on each one of those. So there's we go deep diving on each individual topic uh, in that category. And then on Thursday nights, we do um, technology training. Okay. And most, most of that is going to be based on your website and then your, your contact res, uh, management program, which is inside of the website. Okay. So the way all of this comes together is that we take all three avenues, and what we're trying to do is get people to go to your website so that they automatically register into your CRM. And as you know, when you get them into your CRM program, you can start the drip campaigns, and you can also look at any searches they do in the side of the MLS through your website. Okay. So it'll keep track of any searches they set up, but it'll also keep track of any houses that they select that they're interested in. And as they select those houses, you get an email saying, "Hey, you know, John Smith selected this property." And so you make a phone call to John. Yeah. You know, hey. This is a, that's how you like that property. Let's go take a look at it, right? Okay. So what we're working on is our funnel, our referral funnel, mm -hmm. our, our, uh, our uh, 
people funnel. Yeah. So we start with a great big giant funnel right at the top, and we just pile everybody we meet. That's going to be your, your sphere of influence people, your Facebook marketing people, your open house marketing people. You know, everybody that you meet and greet and give cards to that goes to your website, those are all the people that are going into your, your marketing funnel. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the way to think about it is, like any funnel, it's bigger at the top and smaller at the bottom, right? Yeah. So as you pile people into the top, they're going to start self-filtering. I don't have the money for it right now. I've got a lease for the next 12 months. Uh, my credit is bad. You know, all of these things are people that are taking them out of your funnel. Mm -hmm. So as you get down to the bottom, you've got those people that are coming out. And these are people that want to do something in real estate. They want to do it now, and they will use you as their realtor. Okay. Right? Those are the only big three things that we care about having. Yeah. Uh, you know, if anything else is just fluff, right? Yeah. You know, those are the what we we're trying to gain to make it happen. Uh, I'm gonna try to show you my board over here, so let me know if this works or not. Okay. <laughs> Again, like I say, this is experimental for us with this new city shutdown and everything. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna try to shift the camera and just let me know if it if it gets crazy. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So. I don't know if you can see that or what we want. Yeah, I can see it. Get some extra distance here. Okay, so if you look on the right-hand side of the board, uh, where it says T and O H at the top, mm -hmm. that's the people that are brand new into the system. They just came into our system, so we're tracking them to see when they're going to get their first buyer's representation agreement mm -hmm. or their first listing of, uh, appointment. Okay. So once they get either one of those and they start actually getting clients. They move to the left of the board, which is over here where it says pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> and you see the numbers next to everybody's name there? <clears throat> That's how many deals that they've had working since, or how many deals they've got working as of right now. Uh, what happens is once a deal goes under contract, that number reduces by one because these are only people that are in pipeline. Once they go under contract, they're out of your pipeline because then they're in contract to close situation on them. So what we're looking for, you see these guys down here at the bottom where it says uh, zero? Yes. That means that they had somebody under buyer's representation agreement. They went under contract, but they didn't have anybody to fill that slot with. Gotcha. That's what we don't want to see. That's what we're working against. What we want to see is when they go under contract, they have one or two already in place to fill that back up. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And that, that's kind of what the goal is of all the marketing that, that I work on. Uh, I'm going to put my camera back down so it's okay. a shaky here. Don't, don't get seasick on me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. How's that? Great. All right. So that's, that's kind of where my part of the marketing works on. Okay. <clears throat> you know, it's to get your pipeline working and start filling up your pipeline to see how many people we can get in there. And then how many deals we can work for. Because if you're keeping your pipeline up at three or four people, mm -hmm. you're going to be closing two to three deals a month. With two deals a month, you're actually looking at a pretty decent income camera falling. <laughs> you know, four deals a month, uh, a month with the average price range, and the average price range right now is about 240 to 280. That's between the average and the median. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at about a 260 price range. So if we're doing, uh, let's say, two deals a month, that's going to be $15,000 a month as income. Okay. Now, you split that, you know, and Rick will talk to you about that with the split and the company and everything, and then you want to take a portion out for taxes and the expenses and all those kind of things. But overall, that would give you about $160,000 gross income, mm -hmm. you know, at, at two to three deals per month. Are uh, you looking to come into this full time? Yes. Okay, great. What'd you do before? Uh, screen printer. I owned my own screen print shop for 13 years. Okay. Oh, wow. You yeah. still have the equipment? If you can use that for your sign. Yeah, for everything. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still have all that. Do that on the side, but I'm looking to get into Absolutely. this full time. I'll tell you, you did a ton of business in here because we all do open house signs. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, one of the basic ones, this is one of our basic signs. Oh, got you. Yeah. You could do something like that real easy, you know? Yeah people here and I'm sure you get a ton of side business going. <laughs> the camera just keeps flying that off here. So what do you think about that part of the training program? Is that something that um, you can do? Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good. 
But, oh, what kind of questions did you have for me? What do you look um, like? Okay, so on your side, you you said you're the, the marketing director? Well, they call me the activities director. Activities director. Okay, uh, I'm really not too sure as far as questions. I know I had questions as far as splits and as far as leads. Um, do do you well, guys provide the, the leads? We don't provide a lead because all the advertising is done to you. Uh, let, me, let me show you again here. This is real representative of the sign that you use for an open house or for your yard sign, something like this. You know what's funny? Maribel Fry, did she work there? She, she worked, yes. she sold me my house a few years ago. That's, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's Frank's wife. Oh, oh, really? Okay, okay. Yeah, but the phone number on there is her phone number. Okay. So all the leads are uh, generated to go to her. Okay. Uh, on your website, it's your phone number and your email. On your yard signs, it's your phone number and your email. We, de we designed it to where you generate your own lead. Oh, okay. What we don't want is having, making everybody put the office phone number on the signs, then they call the office, and then we sell them back to the, the agent. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. You know, if you're paying to generate the lead, you should be able to get your own lead. Okay. Right? Yeah. So that's kind of where we go with it. Now, with the training, we're going to teach you how to generate more leads. Got you. It's kind of like, uh, you know, feed a man once. <laughs> yeah. Teach a man to... <laughs> we're going to teach you how to fish. All right, got you, got you. So that's kind of where we're heading with it is we don't have floor duty again because all the everything is designed to make them call you directly mm -hmm. do you guys offer like um apartment locator services uh the training also we don't train on it uh specifically but yeah. i have done it so if you have questions about it i can help you with okay that. okay uh, it's a quick way to make some money yeah the, you know the downside on it is it's not regulated by MLS, mm -hmm. so sometimes you have to chase the money down. Oh, got you, uh, got you. Uh, so you generate an invoice form and you send them the invoice with the IABS and your buyer rep agreement. Mm -hmm. But because it's not regulated, like they don't go to a closing table where the title company is gonna split the money. Yeah. You have to be a bill collector. To them oh, okay, I see, I see what you're saying. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to chase it. it you know, sometimes it's 90 days away before you get paid. Yeah. Uh, because it's not regulated, so you have to chase it down and, and see, you know, to get paid. If they will pay, you got you. Okay. Some of them are pretty good about it, but some of them are just takes time. Yeah, it's just like anything, right? It just depends where you go and who you do business with. Yeah, you know, the, the big corporate places, they'll write, you give them an invoice, and they have to do an invoice to their corporate office, and then corporate has to process yeah. it, and then the corporate pays the company. Then the company has to go back through their invoices to find yours to pay you. Yeah. So sometimes you just have to do you know multiple phone calls, chase them down. It's good money, mm -hmm. but it does take a little bit more effort. Okay. Uh, we don't you know re renting houses on the market. There you don't get paid very well for that. Yeah. Uh, for house rentals, you know sometimes it's only two hundred bucks, two hundred fifty bucks. Sometimes you'll get a percentage of the rent, but normally it's going to be a flat fee. Okay. Okay. So uh, so, what are your fees there in, in the office as far as like a, okay because that's that's more his job. We have three distinct people in three distinct areas of expertise. Okay, and we try not to step on each other's feet. You know, like KJ's our administrative guy. Anything administrative goes through him. Rick's the broker, legal, contract questions all go through him. Anything to do with marketing, lead generation, you know, any of that kind of stuff comes through me. Okay, all right. Let me go grab him real quick, see if he wants to do this or if he wants to give you a phone call. Because he's in the office across the hall. Okay, that's fine. All right, give me one second. All right. Jason, right? Jason, correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna give you a call on the phone. Um, okay. He's, he's never done any of this kind of technology and stuff. I think it's still kind of odd for him. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, my phone number, if you want to call me directly, is two one zero. Okay. Five three five. Eight eight one five. Okay. It's Reggie. 
Hawk, H-O-C-K. All right, Reggie, I appreciate your time. Absolutely, and I'm going to go ahead and end this, and then I'll send you, I'll get Rick to give you a call right back. All right, thank you. Yeah, if you have any questions, send me a text, call me, anything. Sure will, thanks. All right, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hello? Can you hear me? Is that over? Did you get all that? Was I even recording? Alright. That was night and day from my first meeting. I wish I recorded my first meeting. I also did it here on the Skype type uh, format. Um, it wasn't Skype, but it was... Um, I, I don't know what this was, but anyway. But anyway, this was night and day. Um, the first meeting I had was with JB Goodwin. Um, I, I'm not even sure who these guys were because when the meeting started, as you saw there, they didn't introduce themselves from the company they were, uh, the brokerage they were uh, representing. He just gave me his name and let's get right into it. It was kind of all over the place. Uh, he just started talking about um, fees and uh, not fee, excuse me. He started talking about uh, marketing and promotion and he just jumped right into it. Um, the first the first uh, brokerage that I interviewed with, which like I said was JB Goodwin, it was it seemed well polished. Um, they had a whole uh, agenda of what they wanted to talk about. They went through all the steps, they answered all of my questions. At the end of the video, they gave me a uh, a quick little tour uh, by way of cell phone um, of the office, huge office, a lot of different departments. They also had a on-site um, uh, mortgage broker, which is always a big plus. Um, I mean, just it, it was just like like night and day from what I saw here. Um, while this guy Reggie, while he was trying to find the, the broker that I was supposed to interview with. Um, he didn't want to do it over the Skype. He he was going to give me a call because he was new to Skype or something. He didn't want to be on camera. Okay, fine. But while he was looking for him, there were two ladies in the background arguing about something. So the, the <laughs> this one is a big X. Nope. Somebody just called me right now, which I believe might have been uh, that person. Reggie and um, it was just a big no go. I was ready to sign with um, with JB Goodwin yesterday just because I was so impressed. Um, they gave me all all the uh, the CRM. You know, they explained everything in detail. They went through all the numbers with me of the splits. Um, I was pretty happy with the splits. I knew it was more than other companies, but as far as as training I mean training they, they're giving you all this different training um, and it's just it was just night and day from what I saw as far as um, brokerages I know these are just two brokerages I, I was uh, gonna interview with another one um, the only reason like I said I didn't sign with JB Goodwin right away is because the fees the fees it came out to like 800 bucks which is only two hundred forty dollars for um, only two hundred forty dollars for a, the JB Goodwin fee. Everything else is for um, your realtor fees, um, your MLS fee, your board of realtor fee, um, which adds up to like six hundred bucks, and then your JB Goodwin fee, and that's pretty much all you're gonna pay for the full year, right? So that's where I'm at right now. Um, like I said. Uh, I really wanted you to see this. He was a nice guy. He he was, but as far as, um, as far as professionalism and uh, the person that I was supposed to interview with didn't want to come on camera for some reason, um, and this guy couldn't answer my questions, and he said he was a managing. Um, I'm not even sure. I gotta go back and watch the video. I'm just so confused about what just happened right now, but um. I just wanted to give you a little inside look of what it's like to interview with the brokerage. Like I said, I wish I, I recorded that first interview I had, but um, appreciate you watching. Check you on the next one.
What's going on YouTube? In today's video, I'm gonna cover how much it costs to become a real estate agent and the fees associated with it. So fees are gonna vary depending on state. I'm in Texas, so I'm gonna cover the Texas state fees. Even if you're not in Texas, this video will give you a ballpark of how much you're gonna to need to get started in real estate. So let's start with the first thing you're gonna need, and that is applying to get your real estate license with TREC. That's a Texas Real Estate Commission. Again, if you're in another state, it's gonna be the Georgia Real Estate Commission, New York Real Estate Commission, whatever it is, but you're gonna to have to, first thing you're gonna to have to do is apply with your state's real estate commission, and that fee is $205. Next thing you're gonna to need to do is sign up for a real estate course. Now, the course I took was realestateu.tv, and this course cost me $167.79. Now, the course is good for up to a year, so for whatever reason, if you don't finish that course within the year, you can go on a month to month, but you will first have to buy the full year of the course. So along with the course, there's gonna be six tests. So you take one part of the course, you're gonna to have to take a test, another part of the course, take another test. So those fees are gonna be $15 per test, pass or fail. So if you fail, you're gonna to have to retake that test and pay another $15. So, so right there, we're at 462.79. So the next thing you're gonna need to do is to get your background check. And the background check in Texas is 38.25. And you're gonna actually have to go um, to a designated place to get your fingerprints taken. Um, I think you have to take three forms of ID. Um, I'm not too sure what else they need, but from what I remember, that's all it is. Just your fingerprints and three forms of ID and they run it through uh, the FBI database uh, to make sure your background's clear. So keep in mind, you can't do all this at the same time. What's gonna happen is once you apply for your real estate license from Trek, there's gonna be uh, certain points um, that you can't pass until you complete a task. So you apply with Trek, they're gonna tell you, okay, you need to take your real estate course. Once you pass your real estate course, you have your certificate, you upload it to Trek, they're gonna tell you, okay, now you can take uh, your background check. Okay, you submit your background check. After you do that, they're gonna tell you, okay, now that you submitted and passed your background check, now you can go to the next step, which the next step is to take your final exams, which is the state and the national. Now, the state and national run $54. So your first time when you, uh, pay your fee, it's gonna be $54, and that's gonna be for both the state and national. But the kicker is, is let's say you pass one, you pass your state, but you didn't pass your national. You have to go back, and now you gotta pay $54 for your national, or $54 for your state. So every time you don't pass, you're gonna to need to retake that test and pay another $54. Keep in mind, you only get three tries. Once that three tries is up, you gotta go back and take uh, another real estate course. So you have to pass that real estate course. Once you do that, you can retake your final exam. So be sure you're ready when you take your final exam um, that you're not gonna fail. Now me, I messed up because I passed the national. I really crammed for the national because online everybody was saying that national, uh, the national exam was harder than the state. So I really paid attention to the national. I passed it the first go around and the state I didn't pass. So I had to take the state again, I didn't pass. And the third time it was do or die. If I didn't pass it, I would have to take the real estate course again, but I did end up passing it. But I had to pay $54 two more times to retake those tests. So let's say you pass it on the first time, that'd be $54. So right now we're at 555 and four cents. Okay, you might be saying, all right, that's fine. 500 bucks, $550. So the next fee you're gonna have to do is register with your local board of realtors. So here it's uh, San Antonio Board of Realtors and that's a $100 fee, plus you have to register 
with NAR, the National Association of Realtors, which is a $150 fee plus a $35 public awareness fee. What that basically is, is you're uh, funding their promotion budget. Whenever you see a commercial, uh, newspaper ad, uh, radio ad, whatever it is, right? So the fee there is, all right, so now we're at 840 and four cents, but we're still not done because now you need to get with a broker. Now, brokerages aren't free. So there's two different ways to approach a broker. So the first is to go in with a split and you're not really going to get charged too much up front. You're going to get charged a hundred to three hundred dollar onboarding fee. And that's a one time fee per year. But you're going to have maybe a 70 30 split or 80 20 split, which you get 80 percent of your commission. The broker gets 20 or 70 30 or whatever the terms are. Right. Another way you can do it is a hundred percent commission. Beware of these hundred percent commissions, though because that sounds good. Wow, I get 100% of my commission, right? But they're gonna charge you about $300, $350 fee per month. So they don't care if you make a sale, they don't care what you're doing, they have um, no help. I mean, you're, you're out there pretty much by yourself because they're getting their money from you every month, whether you make a sale or not. So just be aware of those types of brokers that they're not really good for anybody who's just getting into real estate because you are going to need that help um, you might even need to give up a little bit more of a split to um, a seasoned real estate agent just to kind of see uh, just get their help a little bit uh, bend their ear a little bit but that's another topic let's go back to this right here so let's say you stay with a broker with a split so let's say you do a $150 fee okay meet that in the middle so right now we are at 990 and four cents so this is not even including your wardrobe this is not even including um, any type of promotional materials that you're gonna need uh, this is not even including um, like the DocuSign um, accounts you're going to need all these different little things you're going to need uh, when you get with the broker that they're going to require you having now i'm not going to go over every single little thing uh, that you're going to need as far as fees because every broker is different and what they're going to require you to have so just in these fees right here you're looking at 990 and four cents so let's just say a thousand dollars so right off the bat before you do anything else you're looking at $1,000 before you sell a house, before anything happens, right? You're at $1,000 to become a real estate agent. But hold on. There's one more thing. There is a renewal license fee, and that's going to be every two years. Now, that renewal fee is going to be $110. Now, that's in Texas, right? With the TREC. So that fee is $110 plus you're required to do CE, continued education, right? So continued education, you need to pay for. So it just depends on where you go to get that continued education. You need so many hours of CE, right? So you could end up paying three, four, five hundred dollars for that continued education plus a hundred ten dollar um, renewal fee. But hopefully, by that time, I mean, that's two years down the line, right? After you get your real estate license. So hopefully by that time, you'll be making so much money that few hundred dollars isn't that much of a hit, but that's just something to keep in mind. So just a little bit of background. I got my real estate license in two months. From the time I applied with Trek to the time I passed my final exam, it took me right under two months. So it doesn't really have to be a long drawn out process. I know there's people that say it takes six months, a year, whatever it is. And of course, you go at your own pace, but that's the beauty of it. You can go at your own pace. If you want to go faster and you want to start making money right away, you need to just hit the books and do it. Take those courses, pass those little exams and get it going, get it popping. I mean, you can do it, but you just have to really focus and get it done. So 
it's not a long shot. It's really not something to where, oh man, I don't think I can do it because it's going to take a crazy amount of time to do it. Plus it's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. It adds up, but you don't have to pay it all at one time. It's all these different fees. So you pay, you pay as you go, right? So I hope this video helped you out. I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be making a lot more uh, videos on helping you get your real estate license and everything else involved with being a real estate agent. So again, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and check you on the next one. All right, this is a take two. I went through the whole take. Turns out it wasn't recording, so I was just kind of rambling to myself here. So welcome to my first video on this channel. What I'm going to be doing is documenting my journey through getting my real estate license and everything that entails in that. Now, this part I'm doing here is how long does it take to pass your real estate course? I am in Texas, so I will be getting my license through the TREC, uh, Texas Real Estate Commission. And one of the requirements is that you pass uh, a 180 hour course. Now, Texas has one of the highest hourly requirements. The only other one that I know I would compare it to is California, which I believe is 140. Uh, I believe like Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, other states um, are like 40 hours, 60 hours. It just depends, but Texas is gonna be one of the highest. Now, the way it breaks down is <clears throat> the full course is six parts. Uh, in those six parts, you're gonna have Texas Principles of Real Estate Part One, Texas Principles of Real Estate Part Two, Texas Law of Contracts, Texas Promulgated, Texas Promulgated Contract Forms, Texas Law of Agency, and Texas Real Estate Finance. Those are the six parts, and each part is a 30-hour course. At the end of each course, you're gonna have a test that you have to pass in order to jump to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, right? So you have to pass each one. Now, the TREC is not the one issuing this course. If you go onto their website, trec.gov, you're gonna see different uh, schools and courses um, that, that are authorized uh, by the TREC to be teaching these courses. Um, you can go to school for that, it, but if you do it like in an actual school itself, it's gonna take much longer than it's gonna take you to do it online. I know some people rather go to school because you have an uh, instructor there to answer your questions. Uh, you have a lot more hands-on approach, but if you're doing it online, uh, depending where you take it, um, you're gonna kind of go at your own speed. There's some things you're gonna know, you're gonna wanna fast forward through, some things you're gonna wanna uh, you know, repeat, rewind, and listen to again. Um, <clears throat> the course that I took is called Real Estate U. And you can find that if you can find them on uh, online at realestateu.official.academy. Um, this course here ran me $160. Uh, so there are going to be courses that are more expensive. There's going to be courses that this is one of the cheapest ones I found uh, that I found. Um, I believe there was another one that was like a hundred bucks, but it was all uh, text. Uh, what I mean by that is you kind of just have to go in like a textbook and read everything yourself. This one here uh, I like because it uh, it had kind of like a audio, uh, somebody reading uh, the text and kind of letting you know, kind of like an instructor, uh, audio instructor, uh, basically what it is. Now I will say this, there are, uh, let me go into this real quick. Each course, there's six courses total, each course has 10 to 12 chapters and in those 10 to 12 chapters you're going to have pages each page you open up is going to be timed so let's say for example one page is just a uh, contract download for you to review the contract it's not going to let you it's not going to let you fast forward through that page for maybe six minutes um, there's going to be another page uh, that you open up it's not going to let you go to the next page uh, for maybe 30 minutes. It just depends what the instructor is teaching, but it's not gonna let you go forward. Now that's just this Real Estate U course. I don't know the way um, these other courses do it, but that's Real Estate U, and I think that's probably the way um, every other course is gonna do the same thing, just because um, they wanna make sure you get your full 30 hours 
per course and your full 180 hour course total. Um, again, I started this course February the 3rd and I finished it on February the 17th. So it took me two weeks, uh, just about two weeks to burn through this course. I was on this course every single day. Um, I mean, I was going hard trying to get this course out the way. Now, you might be saying, okay, so I took the course, now what? Now do I get my real estate license? No, there's a lot more things to it. Um, you have to actually register through uh, TREC and uh, submit a formal application. Uh, the application cost, I believe right now it's $205, $205 to do that. And then you have to wait. You have to submit all your course certificates through the TREC to let them know that you did complete the 180 hour course. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention is after, when you're done with your first course and you're gonna take that final exam, there's six final exams, right? Each course, six courses. So that final exam, you're gonna pay $15. And again, I'm not sure the way other courses do it, but you're gonna have to uh, use a proctor. Um, they go through, uh, I believe it's called Proctor U. And what that is, is when you, you're gonna take your test online, there's gonna be somebody watching you take your test, making sure that you're not on your phone getting the answers. Um, making sure that you don't have a cheat sheet or something like that, right? So there's gonna be somebody actually there walking you through the steps and uh, watching you through you know, your webcam or what have you. And um, just to make sure that you are taking the test correctly and that somebody's not taking the test for you, you're gonna to need to have your ID, uh, show them your ID, show them that it's you, the whole thing. Um, you're gonna do that six times and for each course that you take, it's $15, right? So that's what's that, uh, 30, 60, 90, so that's an extra $90. So that's 160 plus 90, so that's 250, just in the course itself. Um, so then from there, let's say you submit all this uh, information to TREC, T-R-E-C, uh, Texas Real Estate Commission. From there, what you're gonna do is, once they approve you, um, what's gonna happen is they're gonna send you um, a packet or maybe not even a packet. They're gonna send you information to go get your, your fingerprints taken for a background check. And from there, what happens is you have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, once your, back, your background check clears, a lot of people don't know this. What they're gonna do is make sure that you don't have any outstanding student loan debt. Now, you might have student loan debt that isn't um, in default. If it's not in default, you're good. But if you have student loan debt that is in default, that might be an issue. So just be aware of that. So you might be thinking, man, you know what? I'm not sure about my background for whatever reason, right? I'm not sure, you know, I have, I've had a, a misdemeanor back in the day. Maybe you even had a felony or you're not sure about your, uh, your default situation as far as your student loans, right? What you can do before you apply to um, get your real estate license through Trek, which is $205, is you can submit a background form. Now the background form is $50. So 50 um, instead of your 205, and then they can still deny you because you're not sure. Um, you know, I'd pay the 50 before um, I do that full 205. So the background check, what, what that's gonna do is you send it to them with your $50. Um, you know, you tell them your situation, everything, you know, your background, all that, and then they'll get back to you, let you know, like, no, you, you can still apply or you need to clear this up before we can go forward with you. Um, so that's just another thing to think about. Um, like I said, I will be documenting uh, all my steps right now um, to get my real estate license. Uh, so if you're interested in getting yours, you know exactly how much it's going to cost, what you need, how long it takes, all the way through. Uh, interviewing with brokers, all that stuff. I'm gonna be documenting everything. So right now what I'm doing, like I said, I just passed my six part 180 hour course, which took me two weeks, is I'm going to, I'm waiting, actually waiting for Trek to get back to me. So what I did, um, which a lot of people don't do, um, what I did is I actually applied through Trek first, just because they're backlogged. It's gonna take them about a month to get back to you, right? So I applied through Trek first before I started my course because I knew the course was gonna take 
Um, I thought I actually thought my course was gonna take like two months because everybody was telling me you, the course is gonna take at least two months. But I just kind of shut out all the noise and I sat here on my laptop and knocked it out. Um, of course, it's gonna take longer if you know you're doing other stuff. But I just really wanted to get this out the way, so I actually um, applied on Trick. So that took off two weeks from the time I had to wait because if I did my 180 hour course and then apply through Trick, I have another two weeks that I, I'd actually have to wait. Uh, so right now I'm just waiting for Trick to get back to me. I submitted um, all my, um, my certificate, my course certificates. Uh, so I'm waiting for them to get back to me, to give me the information, to go get my fingerprints taken, pass my background check, and then we'll go from there. Um, if you haven't already, be sure and like and subscribe so you can uh, follow along and see uh, the progress and see how long it takes from start to finish to get everything to get everything done and uh, I appreciate you watching and check you on the next one.